What's going on, everybody? We are in the heart of the Gulch. My name is Tony Mendoza, and today we have an amazing guest, an amazing Latina. Her name is Carmen Morgan. How are you doing, Carmen? I'm doing great. How are you, Tony? <laughs> <laughs> I had I seem to always hit things. It's always the beginning of the uh, show where I'll always mess up and hit another button, so I promise that. So, well, first of all, thank you so much for joining us at the yeah. heart of the Gulch. And uh, I'm really excited to learn more about your story. We are talking about it before we got on. Yeah. And um, so just kind of give me the background prior to you moving to Nashville, originally from Houston, Texas, right? Yes, correct. Houston, Texas. Love Houston, mm -hmm. honestly. Miss it a little bit. Yeah. Miss the food, miss the culture. Oh, I believe it. Yeah. It was a great time, you know, being in Houston. Mm -hmm. I was a teacher. Mm -hmm. I was an art teacher for middle and high school for about five years. Kind of bounced around a couple different schools. Mm -hmm did some substituting, eventually burned out, honestly. It's um, it's a really hard job. Absolutely. And I commend teachers for doing it. My brother is actually still a teacher. Uh -huh. I don't know how he does it, but he's like, I think he's like 17 years in at this stage or more. Mm -hmm. I've probably forgotten, but he's a math teacher. And so it's just, I'm like, I don't know how he does it. Was it was a little but. bit of everything, right? <laughs> so if I remember correctly, it was a little bit of PE, a mm -hmm. little bit of, what was the direct subject? Art. Art. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> that that must be interesting within itself because that's technically an elective, yes, right? So correct. you have a lot of kids that are in there that from all areas of the mm -hmm. school. So correct. it kind of makes it like uh, you got the ones that are really attentive mm -hmm. and then you got the real, you know, necios, right? You have yes. the ones that are crazy all the yes. time, right? Exactly, exactly. It was, it was challenging. It was a lot of fun. I will say I miss the kids and mm -hmm. engaging with that age group is pretty fun. You can get into some cool jokes and like mess with them and they do really good projects at that level. But it was very challenging in the sense that it's like for an elective class, you typically have like 40 kids at once, which is really? just insane. Yeah. I mean, it's like me and 40 kids. Well, and you know, that that's why we have to give an applause <laughs> to all of the teachers out there, because you guys do so much or well, did so much because now, you know, now we're transitioning to where you train and everything mm -hmm. like that. And and people my age, I'm 30, uh, we act like kids too. We're just yeah. not as loud and as obnoxious, or some of us aren't, yeah, you know? So, so in Houston, mm -hmm. and you already talked about it, you miss the food, I miss the food. I so I'm originally from San Antonio, Texas. Oh, nice, okay. So um, Houston is basically our backyard as well. Uh -huh. And uh, there's a few things that I miss. Number one is good Mexican food. Yes. We don't have cannot, any good Mexican food. Cannot get it. No disrespect to anyone that lives in Nashville. Cannot get it here. <laughs> and, it's, and it's a weird thing because people try to do Tex-Mex here. Uh -huh. That isn't necessary. It's just not good Tex-Mex. Mm -mm. No disrespect to anyone mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. uh, but <laughs> another thing I miss, uh, other than H-E-B. Uh, oh. Well, you got to let the people know what H-E-B is because they may not know what H-E-B is. H-E-B is like the best grocery store ever and they carry so much stuff. It's amazing. They have like specialty things. Right. They have their own brand in the there. The tortillas, man. Yeah, Ooh. everything is so good. <laughs> See, you can tell that it's early in the morning because we're already talking about food yeah. and I'm ready for lunch already. I've been up early, man. Same, same. Okay, so then from, uh, from Houston and, and what was the direct area of Houston? I was in the Heights for the, the most heights. part, okay. yeah. But I taught at a school in Fifth Ward. Okay. Yeah. So. Oh man, so you must have had all different types of people. Yeah, I it was a it was a tough school. Mm -hmm. I will say we got you know we were always on the list that might be closed down each year, sort of thing on that really? list of HIC schools. Yeah, but I don't know if it's still there. Honestly, I haven't checked in in a while, but I probably should. So just before we transition to to your transition into a trainer, right? Uh, one thing that I've realized is. I've kind of heard you talk about it before was that it was stable, right? Mm -hmm. So with the teacher salary, even though it's a teacher salary, mm -hmm. it's nice to get that paycheck every single, you know, month, yeah. every twice a month, I'm guessing. Yes. Right. Yes. And, mm -hmm. um, but coming from a school like that, where you're not sure mm -hmm. if down the road in two years, yeah. you know, it ain't, and it may not be there anymore. Correct. I mean, how much yeah. of a challenge was that to know that, you know, that may be happening too prior to you taking this journey. It was a big challenge and it was honestly not as stable as I would have liked it to feel for the challenge of the job. So I'm like, if this is going to be as challenging as it is to be a teacher, I would rather it have more perks. And unfortunately we don't do that for our teachers in the US, which well, sucks. That's, that's the saddest thing. Yeah. Well, so now talk to me about your fitness journey 
prior to you t- going straight into business, right? Into the social world that you are because you are an amazing social influencer, yeah. but not only influencer, more or less, it's really just putting people in the right mindset, yeah. which I love. And it's really your energy. It, it really comes out on because I can only imagine it doesn't take you that many takes to get no, what you need done, no. right? Yeah, no, no. I think it's better to just do it in one take, honestly. I mean, and if you can't be yourself, I, I think people would be able to tell too and it comes off less authentic. Was, so were you always into fitness when you were teaching? I was for the most part. So I grew up kind of loving sports. I have an older brother. And so okay. anything he was doing, I kind of wanted to do. We mm-hmm. would toss the football around, that kind of thing. I played tennis, soccer, volleyball. I injured a knee in a soccer eventually and it was sort of kind of like um surgery is optional but you know i'm not good enough that i really need surgery yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like I'm, my parents are like no you're so good. all around athlete like your brother <laughs> yeah yeah we both just kind of you know we enjoyed it more than we were going to go to any kind of professional level you know what i mean man so. <laughs> that is uh one thing my mom told me so one thing about uh, just, you know, Hispanic families is that they will tell you straight up what it is. So they said, you know, look at your dad. That's what my mom says. She said, look at your dad. <laughs> and I want you to see we're not tall, right? <laughs> Latinos don't grow tall. And another thing is we grow, we don't grow tall. We grow wide. <laughs> <laughs> so in a way, she said, the only thing you can do is play football. But Tony, you're t- way too skinny. <laughs> so um, and I wasn't fast enough to play soccer. Yeah. So when mm-hmm. when it comes to anyone that I know that plays soccer, that must mean y'all's mm-hmm. endurance. Oh, yeah. And just um, being able to pivot mm-hmm. at any given time, which I'm sure helps you in roles like today. Yeah, it sure does. And team sports, honestly, I think is valuable for kids, no matter if they are going to go professional or not. I mm-hmm. think you then have to make the choice as the parent is if if that injury list or if those uh, physical demands are worth it for your kid. Mm-hmm. You know, and that might be a tough conversation where you do have to be like, listen, you don't have <laughs> you're so- don't you're sounding kind of like a teacher right now because you're kind of you're, you're you're putting them down easy yeah yeah you got to talk to them about you know other avenues and other things they could do in life which training is honestly a great place to go especially if you do still value like human movement or the way the body works or sports or anything like that longevity it's like it's a great place to pivot to i think okay well let's talk about that pivot so um I'm guessing within one, but you took it halfway, right? So you started Mm -hmm. in your journey of teaching just, you know, overall fitness goals, Mm -hmm. right? To people inside your apartment gym. Yeah. Right. Correct. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Uh See, I see. uh, (laughs) I remember some things. Yes. And uh, from there, tell me about how you were able to get your clients. So I was always um, interested in fitness. And so when I was in college and I was doing my teaching degree, I was sort of shadowing a couple of my friends that were in kinesiology and were doing their Uh. degrees there. And so I would just kind of play around with them at the rec center. I would see what they were doing. I was into working out. It was the first time my knee was feeling better once I became sort of like a meathead. (laughs) And I started lifting. I never had any other problems with my knees. So Mm -hmm. I was like, I was just sold on that. And um, then once I was in teaching, I would occasionally pick up a client like within the school like another teacher during, really? the, during the summer wow just for extra cash that makes so much sense actually mm-hmm. now that i think about that mm-hmm. it's a nice and teachers don't have time so it'd be like maybe a couple of us after school mm-hmm. while we're waiting for the like late kids to get picked up or something we'd grab a workout in the gym or something so it's like easy sort of like way for me to stay in fitness while i was still teaching so then when i quit teaching i used my apartment complex to the best of my abilities and i just put my cards, cards out cards everywhere right yeah by oh, the man. elevator and i got three girls and this is in houston still mm-hmm. so that is amazing so then from so talk to me about that early business structure mm-hmm. because obviously business has changed right you are yes. successful today mm-hmm. and um Tell me about that business business structure that you had with three clients. Yeah. Was it something that you were prepping either meals, prepping uh, workout routines, mm-hmm. or was it just something that, hey, you're paying to see me every day to help me work out with you? How uh, was it? It was one-on-one training in person. Mm. Yeah. And so I will say the way I was able to save money and sort of grow was... The apartments I was located in were very industrial, and so everything was very concrete. So one of the rooms I just had as like sort of the gym room, Mm -hmm. and it was convenient for these girls that lived in the building. They were like young professionals. One of them had a couple kids. It was like just for me to be located there in the building, we could either use the facility gym or they could just come to my apartment for a more one-on-one feel and we would get it done there. And so it was, I think the convenience really helped me sell that. And I think being in my home also helped me save money. I didn't have to pay any kind That's of trainer so smart, fee. Yeah, yeah it, was, it, was, it was good, honestly, it was really good. It was small, you know, but yes. it, it worked. 
And that's the thing, right? You have to start somewhere. And that's mm -hmm. what I'm learning about everyone that I'm that we're interviewing in the heart of the Gulch is that everyone starts in with an idea. Mm -hmm. And then from that idea, you find love, right? Mm -hmm. And then from there, you rent, you're ready to take that journey. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about before we before we go into another section here, talk to me about the transition from Houston, Texas to Nashville, Tennessee. Was yeah. was there a long transition prior to that or what year did you make that jump? I think that was it was a longer transition. So I was when I became a trainer and I quit my job, a lot of my friends honestly had told me that I needed social media. I had never had social media prior to that because I was a teacher and When I was, was this? Like, you remember oof, what year? Oof. I'm like, how <laughs> okay okay it's no big like no biggie. 20 i was uh i graduated college in 08 uh -huh. i became a teacher like for the next five ish four or five years so, so like let's just say just let's just quantify maybe 2016 yeah, 17 something, 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 something like that yeah all right all right, all right. so, so you start like again 14, 15, before yeah. the big because everything changes in social media especially when it comes down to stories it's uh -huh. not even sto their oh, stories no, no, weren't no. there no reels weren't there no it was just it straight was, up posting it was like the crazy i think you could only put a video up that was like 30 seconds yep, 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 or yep. something. That's when uh, I believe that the fitness lady, Katie Hearn, uh, she was one of the ones oh, that okay. started yeah, something like that. Yeah, so, okay, so probably. that's how you started doing uh, social media then? Yes, I did. And I always approached it from strictly business because I just had never engaged with social media prior to that. And so I didn't have any kind of attachment to like, what do I make my page look like? I just sort of went, okay, it's going to be an educational straight up page. Business. Yeah. Wow. Just straight education. You were, you were first at that <laughs> because that's <laughs> something that people are just catching on now. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. I think it was easier, honestly, that way, rather than yeah. having to think about like what kind of things I share. It was just I'm going to post as much educational content as I can. And I directly engaged with the comments from the women that I would get that were like, hey, I only have 20 minutes when I put the baby down for a nap and I've got a pair of 10 pound dumbbells. What can I do at home? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so I would sort of just take these comments and then I would post videos. And it just rolled on from there. So mm -hmm. basically you were able to have engagement. Mm -hmm. And then you're able to create your own content, mm -hmm. which I'm guessing, what did you use? Like your phone? Phone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just whatever worked. Yep. And then from there, it started growing organically pretty mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. I think I, I must have gotten featured on a few pages or something mm -hmm. that were mm -hmm. maybe larger. In Houston. But, um, yeah. I'm not sure. Like it was okay. on Instagram. Yeah. We're going, we're going far back. So yeah, I know. I'm like, no, nah, you're good. You're good. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm so, old. <laughs> so then from there it's, um, so I'm guessing, did you ever do any other gyms in Houston prior yes. to you? Okay. So let's yeah, talk about so that. I did work with a few gyms in Houston, mainly consulting was my first, um, gigs in fitness because I didn't really want at the time to have to jump into my own space and worry about like rent, overhead, payroll, all of these things that I didn't feel confident in doing smart. myself. Very smart. I was like, I'll just consult for gyms and do things. I got to work with a place called Dance House Fitness. This mm -hmm. is one of my favorites. I'm still friends with Jenny and Christian who are the owners and um, sort of created some fitness templates for them as they were transitioning. They do dance aerobic um, style classes, which are really fun, like follow along. Mm -hmm like Zumba, but way better. And uh, they wanted a fitness element added into that for a few hybrid classes. And so I created those for them. And then we just- It shows in your content today, actually. I'm, I like dancing. <laughs> and, and, but there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, yeah. but see, here's the thing. As a Latina, people do uh, like to dance. We yeah. like to dance. What's, yeah. that, what's that thing in Selena? We wanna yeah. dance! Yeah. <laughs> right? So in a way, it is part of yeah. our blood because yeah. even with me today with my girlfriend, mm -hmm. she doesn't like to dance. Uh -huh. I love to dance. Yeah. But, you know, people aren't going to see it online, but they can see it on your <laughs> uh, on your website and also your at. So but going from there. So it was Houston and it was that that Zumba slash yeah. working out. Yeah. And I'm guessing and that was so smart that you didn't take the initial overhead. And yeah. for the people that are watching today, consulting just basically being you're able to put your own spin on it. Mm -hmm. You're able to give advice on what to do, how to set up the program. But in a way, you just don't have the direct client coming for you. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm hired out by the business, which I sort of enjoyed more. I don't mind being behind the scenes. I enjoy that part of it. It's pretty cool. So I did that. I, um, I got a lot of opportunities, honestly, through my Instagram. Mm -hmm where I was um, doing fitness events. And that's how I first interacted with the owner of the gym here in Nashville. Re really? So that is uh, making sure that I get this right. It's boot camp gym here uh -huh. in Nashville. Okay. So now that's, I'm guessing that's the transition into Nashville, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. So walk me through that. Yes. So I was working for a company and we were at a fitness retreat event and I got partnered up with Sean Booth, who is the owner of that gym. 
and we sort of got to work on a couple different workouts together. Mm -hmm. Then we continued the relationship with another organization that was bringing me to Nashville to do a pop up at their gym. Mm -hmm. And so I did an, led another class, led some more things. The um, him and his business partner at the time were needing some sort of help, mm -hmm. some more consulting. So I started again by consulting for them and was doing that long distance for a year. Virtually. So yeah. this is prior to the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so mm -hmm. everything. So when you did take the trip over here to Nashville, mm -hmm. I'm only in here for about, I've only been here for about two years. Mm -hmm. So the gulch and everything that we see today yeah. was completely different. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. So when you went into Nashville, mm -hmm. it's before the uh, initial growth spurt, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. It was, you're it an was, early adopter, man. Uh, <laughs> you're an early adopter for a lot of things. Yeah. A little early. I was in Nashville. I mean, it was growing for sure. Everyone kept saying it was like getting crazier and crazier each time my Uber drivers would describe things to yeah. me about how still do yeah how <laughs> things have changed so but i was able to consult for them long distance for about a year a little mm -hmm. over a year maybe and then um after i'd sort of like really gotten involved with their brand i really enjoyed the community i enjoyed the gym the uh, the like the fact that i was able to direct all of the fitness was really valuable to me and mm -hmm. it was something that i wanted to do while also not having to be the only owner i found that very valuable as well because i will say he has more of those um you know uh, um strengths in that strengths area in, that okay I'm, so business minded yes a lot yeah. uh, well not because uh, you're business minded mm -hmm. it's definitely just a way to he takes on a little bit more of the risk, yeah. right? Yeah, Basically. exactly, Absolutely. exactly. And I, I sort of like that and I value that. And the community that was that was here was something that I hadn't gotten to work with yet. I was previously working with a lot of women always, mm -hmm. uh, which I do love, um, but mainly older. I mainly got older women. Um, and when I came here- 30s was, to 40s-ish? Yeah, got it. Yeah, even mm -hmm. older, 50s-ish. And when I came here, it was the first time I had 20 somethings. You know, that is the one thing that we're gonna talk about in Nashville. So one thing about Nashville is different from Texas and especially South Texas uh -huh. is number one when I moved here I noticed that everyone here looks pretty darn good yeah everyone here is mostly yeah. fit at least yeah. in our area that we're living yeah. by yeah. and uh, it's not the same case in Texas there's no. just too much Whataburger mm -hmm. there's just too much <laughs> fast food there's a lot less fast food over uh -huh. here but there's still some yeah and then uh, another thing that I noticed about moving here transitioning here is that there's just a lot more areas of mm -hmm. fitness a lot more uh -huh. and a lot more niche yeah. areas of fitness mm -hmm. right because you have group classes yeah you have like quantum down the street where yeah. you can just be a meathead mm -hmm. and uh it's just very and it's all within what a 10 mile radius it's packed yeah i mean there's a lot of competition mm -hmm. when you think about it oh yeah oh yeah the group fitness scene i will say here is like it's intense. And I think maybe it feels more intense, like you're saying, because of this proximity of everything. Mm -hmm. It's like there is every kind of small group training class you could possibly. But there's have. also a need for it. Mm -hmm. And there's not only a need for it. I'm sure even your clients today may go to both. Mm -hmm. And it's just it's just a fun activity. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's kind of what you bring to the game, too, when it comes to social media. Mm -hmm. You bring that fun. It's not a group class, but mm -hmm. it's a fun, exciting way. You put some foot fun music on. Yeah. You have your electric smile <laughs> and then you're able to just make it almost feel digitally like a class it's yeah. pretty awesome and it's only a, like what 20 second clip 30 yeah. second clip yeah not much not much i love that i will say about group fitness is being able to create that environment and make people feel comfortable and this community here of all young females it was really fun to work with i will say we are getting way more males now i don't want to say that like I, we are always trying to get more dudes in the gym. We're like, let's go because it is all strength training based. Um, we only do two days of high intensity. And so I think a lot of times the guys skip it because they think we're doing all kinds of like jumps or like silly things. And it's like, I, we, we like our panzas, man. Yeah. That's all it is. We like to, we like to stay thick in, in our stomach areas. That's why we're not always there. And the ladies like to loot, like to be nice yeah. and toned. You know what I mean? Men are a little bit more like, eh. yeah. <laughs> and now we're going to talk about a little bit more of booth camp mm -hmm. so uh and you like to call it bc right yes okay so talk to me a little bit about when you transitioned over here to start was it originally being a director with bc or was it it was consulting at first and a long then, distance yes okay and then as i became i think they were able to see my value and sort of see what i was doing for the community and i was honestly really loving it as well and i wanted to be more hands-on because i could see the change that was happening but i knew that if i was here we'd be able to make more impact and more change and so 
we talked some more. I was offered some equity. I was amazing. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, I also teamed up with a building here, so I got to come here and like my rent was taken care of, which was fantastic. You know, that made the move like, okay, well, really, shoot, <laughs> really. man, well, hey, you're able to <laughs> negotiate, huh? Yeah, listen, I still, that one, I'm like, I still don't know how I did that. <laughs> well, I wish I was getting this amazing studio for free, <laughs> yeah. but you know, I'm, yeah. I'm lucky in some ways, yeah. but definitely. So when you made that transition mm -hmm. and uh, you got to talk about a little bit about the owner of BC. So yes. let's talk a little bit about the owner. Yeah. So Sean Booth is, um, I only knew him honestly as a friend at a fitness event, but once I got to know him, I understood he was on the bachelorette, mm -hmm. which is the one where the guys compete for the My girl. girlfriend loves that show. So, okay. so yeah. she knew. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, he was on that and, uh, but he's really cool dude. Chill. You know, I mean, we've been business partners now for years and we get along great. I'd say he's one of my best friends for sure. That's amazing. And that's probably the most important thing. Whenever you go on any business venture, mm -hmm. um, it could be kind of sticky going with someone who is your friend. Mm -hmm. But if you're able to have, if you're able to bring, like you said earlier, if you're able to bring both sides, mm -hmm. one side looks at it from a different angle and the other side looks at it from more of a business angle, mm -hmm. that marriage mm -hmm. is electric. Yeah. So, and yeah. then it originally started from consulting. Mm -hmm. And then once he saw the value that you were bringing, mm -hmm you were able to become a director. Now talk yeah. to me a little bit about that title of director. So director of fitness, I handle everything related to fitness. So in terms of like what equipment should we have in the gym? How do I want to program every day's workouts, uh, a special event workouts. So like we have a pride workout going on this weekend on Saturday. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Shout, out to, shout out to everybody in pride. Yeah. We, just, we support everyone. Yes. And um, so I get to program all of those workouts and then create any kind of extra programs like um, kettlebell learning or like, come learn how to use a barbell or anything like that. We like to do educational style pop-up classes, which are open to everybody, members and non-members, which essentially like, do you want to learn how to do a kettlebell clean or a kettlebell swing or a snatch? And you show some of those moves on your Instagram as mm -hmm. well. So it's uh, at mm -hmm. my trainer, Carmen. Yes. Correct. correct. And um, some of the things I've even seen you go to different locations mm -hmm. in the United States to really learn mm -hmm. what you're going to be teaching mm -hmm. in BC today, yeah. right? And I also get to, so I also work with other organizations as an educator, which mm -hmm. is my favorite thing. So like I work with On It in Austin, Texas, which is one of my favorites. It's, uh, I got hooked up with them way back in the day when I was in Houston. Mm -hmm. And I've been with them ever since, sort of like um, I'm one of their their sponsored athletes. I'll do things with them like on YouTube. We'll do educational mm -hmm. little things. I get to go to look at the certifications, the new certifications that they w roll out and things like that. And then I also work with Kettlebell Kings, which is an excellent organization. Heard of them. Of, of kettlebells. They have the best kettlebells. I'm obsessed with them. And honestly, I think um, Sean and my team at Boothcamp understand the value of me being able to have these other organizations so that when we do want to team up, mm -hmm. Like I also um, coach with pain-free performance, which is called PPSC, which is Dr. John Russin's organization. Mm -hmm. I'm one of the coaches with them and I get to go teach with the team when we go teach new trainers. And then they get to come to our gym here and we have new trainers come in and learn while they're on location in Nashville. So it's like nice partnerships like that. It looks great for Boothcamp. You want to be in the like upper echelon of education in terms of Which fitness. you are though. I mean, when I think about, when I think about all the different, you know, ways to get exercise here, mm -hmm. I've really taken uh, an eye to BC. Nice. And I think that it's, it really comes down to people like yourself. Right. Where they're having the best of the best train, the best of the best teach the programs. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what really sells. I and, do too. And, and, it, and it makes a big yeah. leaps and bound difference from other gyms out there. Yes. Right now yes. I'm, I'm, I live across the street from quantum. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah. But in yeah. reality, there's just so many ways and mm -hmm. the ways that you guys do it at BC just is, is really different. Yeah, it really I, is. I will say I am very proud of us for standing out amongst the crowd of group fitness. Group fitness tends to get a bad rap and I'm not going to, you know, talk mess about anybody. No, we're not. But it <laughs> it tends to get a bad rap in terms of like it beats you up. You sort of fall off the cycle. You run through an injury and then you burn out. It's like a very burnout sort of system. Yes. But so I wanted to completely avoid that at BC and the team is completely on board with that. So our main thing is like doing strength training 
four to five days a week so that we're not running ourselves into ground. So you're doing things that are actually going to be good for your bones, be good for your muscle mass as you age, like all these benefits that we get from strength training. And then we throw in some conditioning and cardio the way it should be done, which is like just at a smarter level for people. So that we're not burning out. We're not seeing injuries. It's intentional, mm -hmm. basically. Very intentional. Now, you got to talk about the growth mm -hmm. because as I as I started yeah. in the Gulch, I yeah. mean, we are almost a crane city. If you look at the logo, I, I put a crane on there because there's so many cranes <laughs> uh -huh. and um, talk to me about the growth of the business so gr talk to me about BC's growth it's been incredible yeah honestly incredible like from from when I was coming to now we are packing out our classes 25 to 28 people per class and we have seven classes a day and we have wait lists of about 10 people on each really class. so yeah. and uh, I'm guessing loyal. loyal pretty loyal very loyal yep. most so of our members come on average six to seven days a week it's so it's not so it's a family yeah it's really uh -huh. it's uh, we see you every day kind mm -hmm. of thing where it's like yo how how oh, was yeah. your trip last oh, week yeah. right yeah we know when you're gone and we you know, know how like, much we yeah. gained yeah you bring your boyfriend and we're all like oh well, yeah awesome got your boyfriend <laughs> to come hey well <laughs> yeah. see that's uh that's another thing that i realized about bc it's really a family atmosphere and we it do is. like that I, so. is. I love it the community honestly is the best community we do all kinds of fun events everybody's got each other's back there it's a super welcoming community you know it might seem intimidating to walk into a group fitness gym but i will say we do an excellent job of not only our staff greeting but we just have members that go up to new people and are like hey is this your first class oh my god isn't this like oh it's so hard okay like, so you gotta all right so sell it to me now think of it like this mm -hmm. me i've always gone to a gold's gym mm -hmm. gone to a quantum right mm -hmm. and it's just because i'm able to tap into my now granted i'm not ripped right mm -hmm. but i'm able to tap into myself by myself mm -hmm. and it helps me relieve the stress right yeah. of the daily life right oh, yeah now how would you convert someone like me who does that every day so i would say if you were looking for any aspect of your workout to be more intense like let's say for me personally like i'm one that can go to the gym as well i can go to the gym by myself i can go to the gym in my basement like i used to in houston in the garage but if you were trying to get through another aspect that maybe you don't enjoy as much, which for me is like cardio mm -hmm. or conditioning training, I really enjoy it in a group. And I didn't realize that until I tried it and realized how much I was able to push myself in that group setting. And so then I tell people like, what is your least favorite thing to train right now? Like, could you maybe benefit from doing even two to three days a week at a group fitness facility where you do get to feel the energy around you? You are pushed past your limits that so you might be like by you are yourself. pushed, yes. That, I would say that 110% mm -hmm. because even though I, and you can agree with this. Anyone that goes to the gym a lot can definitely agree with this is that when you go to the gym, you're not looking, but you are looking, mm -hmm. right? So you're looking to see who's doing what. Mm -hmm. And and really you have to you have to give that time to rest, right? Mm -hmm. You got to give your body a, oh, yeah. some time to rest mm -hmm. before you go to your next set. Uh -huh. But while you look, you kind of do gauge and see, and you get inspired mm -hmm. um, at a regular mm -hmm. gym. But mm -hmm. this is a type of gym where it's a group, right? So mm -hmm. there's not as much rest time I'd assume. Mm -hmm. and it's it's everyone is struggling like you are in a yes. way right at the end yes. of it yes and the nice thing is we build rest time in and so during your five minute station mm -hmm. you likely will only have one exercise to complete for example on wednesdays you might be doing like a kettlebell deadlift and that's your only exercise at that station for five minutes so okay. you are able to build in your rest we have a lot of people that like to tag team weights as well which is a fun way to sort of time your rest with a partner in your mm -hmm. group where you want to share and kind of encourage each other to go heavier what about the introverts so what about the people that do not want to talk to anybody when they go to the gym we honestly do great with them too we yeah. have we have some people that like just come in are quiet knock it out and leave and they're like the you know like a ghost yeah you, they were never there but they put yeah. in the sweat equity and they're yes. out yes and you're ah. always like man they're over there killing it like we were hey. just talking about shout out to the introverts out <laughs> <Yeah>. there <laughs> that's right <laughs> now okay so let's talk a little bit more about you and your journey so i definitely want to know you know, where do you see, I mean, everyone has a plan, right? You don't have to give me your full plan or anything, mm -hmm. but when it comes to how much do you find um, going through the social media route to not only, it's not about the followers. Mm -hmm. I don't think if you enjoy doing what you're doing, which mm -hmm. you're educating others, mm -hmm. specifically women mm -hmm. of all ages, yeah. um, showing them different ways to work out and to be happy. Cause you even have videos on at my trainer, Carmen, um, of just wearing clothing mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily it doesn't feel sponsored it's uh -huh. not and, and even if it is which i don't think most of them are uh -huh. it's more just it shows that you're comfortable in your body mm -hmm. you should feel comfortable wearing 
however you want to wear mm-hmm. a piece of clothing. Is that mm-hmm. right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, a lot of those are not. They might be brands I've worked with in the past or something, and so I continue the relationships with them. But it's it's very much just for fun. Yeah. It's a lot just for fun. It feels fun, though. It's cool to see how many... Uh, you guys should definitely check it out on Instagram. It's cool to see the amount of ways that you can change your apparel just wearing (laughs) just you know a base layer and then you're able to dress it up which you do really well on which i think is probably my art background coming in where Ah. i I just love playing with like colors and things like that and i mean creative side yeah it's just Hmm. a it's just a fun time yeah so what is um well then we got to talk about where the heck are you and so this is my question yeah (laughs) where the heck are you going with all these cool outfits where is your favorite place to go to here in nashville (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, and I honestly don't go out that much, which is hilarious. I always joke with with people that I talk to online in the comments where I'm like, yeah, I will wear this in my living room eventually. (laughs) Yeah, but I'm guessing you travel a lot. I do get to travel a lot. And so I do. One of my best friends, Ashley Cast, is somebody who I get to travel with as well. And she's in fitness. And so we like to do the certifications together. That's sort of our favorite thing. And then we go out to dinner. We're big steak fans. We always want to take ourselves to a steak dinner. So what's the uh, best steak in Nashville? I really enjoyed oak and then Ooh. I know I really enjoyed oak and then honestly I went to um it wasn't here but I went to Eddie V's again okay recently okay in Austin. okay I forgot man it's good first of all uh, how much would you compare Austin to Nashville let's be honest here do you compare Austin to Nashville it's getting more similar so I will say now that I've been back to Austin a few times mm-hmm. recently mm-hmm. it feels that congested like sort of very popular Congress style South area. Congress maybe. yeah it, it feels like Nashville now well you know the one thing that I think well one thing that both cities do very well is that they're able to have little playgrounds mm-hmm. for adults right to mm-hmm. go to go out and to just drink and to socialize mm-hmm. because over there you have rainy street mm-hmm. you have mm-hmm. uh, the place no one wants to go to Sixth street mm-hmm. um, and then you have now the domain Mm-hmm. Vice versa here, what? We have the Gulch. Mm-hmm. We have Broadway if you want to venture that way. Oof. You have Midtown if mm-hmm. you want to venture that way, which yep. is... Um, eh. yeah. You have this area, but you don't go out as much. So I don't. when you do go out here... Mm-hmm. I'm assuming you're kind of like me and my girlfriend. We like to go out to rooftops mm-hmm. and we like to get a nice, uh, if it's not pink, I don't want it. Ah, but uh, yeah. hey, you know, <laughs> hey, man, I'm still a guy at the end of the day. But if yeah. I like a pink drink, I like a pink drink. All yes. right. <laughs> now, where would you go? Like if you had friends visit? Ooh, if I had friends visit, I probably would try to find some kind of patio of, okay. of some kind. I honestly really love East. I like the sort of small spots like Cafe nice. Rosé over there is great. They have an awesome dinner and sort of wine special always going on. Mm-hmm. Um, Hearts in East is also really cool. It's got a back patio. It's great. And you also, I believe you have a uh, pet, right? You yeah. You have a dog, right? I do. And yeah. um, I'm guessing, what's your favorite like little areas? I mean, don't tell me exactly where you go to walk yeah. the dog, but I'm just saying like when when you are, is there l- parks? Is Shelby, there some- Park, for Shelby sure. Park. Shelby is Park is great. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. And they have a golf course there too. And if, when it's um, past evening, you know, and nobody's playing anymore, you can walk the golf course, which is a lot of fun. Oh, that's my favorite part. That's mm-hmm. uh, one thing thing that we do we um the nations is really yes. becoming an area yes. of uh growth yes and uh one and believe it or not i know north nashville isn't much now but i guarantee you north nashville is going to change 110 oh, percent so i bet now okay so now we got to go into just a little bit more i want to dive deeper into the brands that you support mm-hmm. so can you kind of shout out the brand you spoke yeah. about some now so let's shout out some yeah. brands on it for sure uh kettlebell kings uh-huh. Pure Encapsulations, which is like a supplement brand, but it's very clean. It's like clinically tested. You can read all about their products. Um, And then honestly, from there, I mean, I I don't do a lot of brand sponsorships. Well, you are your own brand. So, I mean, we got to also say you got to give yourself a shout out every once in a while, too. You are your own brand. Yeah. (laughs) And pain free performance. That would be my other one. Yeah. Got it. Now, um, if there are. Mm -hmm. any more ventures that you are willing to take a part Mm -hmm. of i mean where can those people reach you just so they know uh directly through my instagram or through my email which is just carmen at mytrainercarmen.com okay so we're going to take a small break real quick and we're going to go to some questions that we have for you i believe i got yeah i got two questions in here and then i have one that was sent to me (laughs) all right so let's get down to crowd noise let's get to some questions some fan questions here How difficult is it to break through as an online fitness coach? 
Um, how difficult is it to break through as an online fitness coach? I honestly think if you have uh, passion and you also get your education together on the background, I think it's not very difficult. I think that there is still a lot of need for people with simple, doable, like maintainable um, actions that they can take for daily fitness and health. I mean, we wouldn't have the level of health crisis that we have if everybody had it all figured out. And so I think getting over the fact that like, you don't have to be some glossy, shiny, like fancy thing. Mm -hmm. You can honestly approach people from a very like standard doable method of things that you know that they can implement on a daily life that they can actually sustain that will actually improve them because then if you are giving them those tools, they will always come back to you. They will always see value in that. And let's stress the education part. Mm -hmm. I want to I want to stress this because yes. I think one thing that we all assume mm -hmm. is from people looking at Instagram and people looking online that we assume that they know what they're talking Correct. about. Talk about Correct. the importance of having education, having certifications, yes. going yes. to these classes and learning firsthand yes. by the people that do it. Yes. I think that is a hundred percent the most important thing for trainers. And it's tough when we get this rap that it's like, it is only about having a cute body or looking a certain way, which it is not, especially mm -hmm. if you were dealing with people's health. It's like, this is, improving the quality of their life. And so if you are not qualified to do that, I think it's going to hurt you and it's going to hurt them. And so making sure as a consumer of fitness that you are looking out for that in your training, that you're asking them, even their experience in terms of one-on-one -on -one training mm -hmm. or writing programs or things like that. It's like, while this person, this girl or man may look jacked or amazing or ripped or tan or whatever it is, if they cannot talk to you about actual steps for you, or if it does not feel personalized to you, or they're not listening mm -hmm. to what your lifestyle is like, mm -hmm. what are your actual setbacks, any kind of injuries, whatever your history is of movement, then you should probably move on from them. You want somebody that listens to you that doesn't just tell you, you just gotta sweat it out, man. Mm -hmm. You just gotta go do that. Well, let's, um, I'm gonna ask my personal question here. Mm -hmm. So my personal question is, what do you tell the person who has the, the difficult time of getting started? I tell them to start small and to remember that sort of fitness and health, whether that's like related to your nutrition is a dial. I want, I always encourage people to think about it as a dial that you can turn. And a lot of times we think about it as like an all or nothing approach where yes. we got to jump in seven days a week. Cause you're seeing the final result, mm -hmm. right? So like, for example, mm -hmm. a person like yourself that looks amazing. Mm -hmm. If I didn't look the way I look today, it's intimidating. Mm -hmm. But how do you break down that barrier? I talk to them about small steps that they can do every day. And I try to remind them that consistency is the number one thing we want to maintain. What we want to get out of is that cycle of falling off where we go really hard into something and then we fall off and we don't do anything for months. And then we go really hard back into it and fall off. Because if you were to remain consistent just for one to two days a week, and just maintain that consistency months, 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 you will still get results. A lot of times people think you won't get results if you're not doing it at a maximum capacity of five to six days a week. And that's simply not true. It's the fact that we start too hard mm -hmm. and we fall off rather than saying, maybe all I have time for is two 30 minute workouts twice a week. That's all I can do right now. Mm -hmm. You stay consistent with those two 30 minute workouts twice a week. You continue to do that. You build on that. All of a sudden, maybe you have time for to add in a 30 minute walk three times a week. You do that, you add it in, you continue to build on that. You, okay. you just do small actionable steps. You maintain consistency and it will 100% get you results. What is the most effective, and, and we're going to keep on this training mm -hmm. uh, question here. So what is the most effective type of training now? Uh, when I say that, is mm -hmm. it something as simple as just doing push-ups every day? Is it as simple something as simple as just running every day? What is the most effective way of training? I will say I encourage strength training. So if you can strength train even three days a week, you will dramatically improve the quality of your life because- Give of, some examples of strength training. Strength training would be anything with resistance. So anything with a barbell, dumbbells, resistance bands, body weight can also count. I will say you will not get as much, but of course it's a place to start if you mm -hmm. can't if you can, excuse me, get a set of dumbbells for your house or get access to some kind of resistance training, it is the best. It is, we're talking about bone dis density. We're talking about reducing all cause mortality. It is excellent as you age. It's fantastic for your skin, mm -hmm. your your muscles. It's also- I mean, come on. <laughs> You're looking at someone who does it every day, right? Yes. And obviously yes. you look younger than me. Oh, so thanks. I think that's amazing by itself. <laughs> all right, now we got a second question going, talking about clients. Hey, Carmen. Who has been your most consistent client? My most consistent client, wow. Or a good client story. Give us a good client story, but if you can remember your most yes. consistent. I had one of my one of my favorite and one of my most consistent in my apartment complex when I was in Houston was a girl named Jessica who was fantastic. Give and, her those flowers. Yes, and her, 
her and uh, her daughter Isabel they were fantastic they used to come Isabel would chill on the couch and like color or something while I would work out with Jessica and Jessica was just such a great time like no matter what she was doing she was making sure she got in her workout we would get in at seven sometimes at eight at night it was just like really yeah when this is in Houston mm -hmm. wow and she was like dedicated she was a single mom at the time it was like I loved watching her you know do this for herself do to feel better and set the example for her daughter i think it's super important for kids to see you doing something like that it makes them less intimidated for them when they mm -hmm. get to that age or when they want to do that well talk about let's talk about just uh taking on clients right mm -hmm. so let's say there's someone watching today that is interested in making the leap like you mm -hmm. did mm -hmm. and their biggest concern or their biggest point of entry mm -hmm. is not able to have the clientele. That's anybody's mm -hmm. point of entry, right? Yes. Even if I didn't have people to interview, yes. it's a clientele. Yes. So what is what is the way to break down that barrier? I think, think about your small networks within the people that you know. So I think sometimes it can seem like, oh my God, who am I gonna ask to be a client? Like, how am I gonna get these clients, a bunch of strangers around? Instead, think about small networks that you might have, whether it's like, if you have a good friend that's a teacher, or if you have a good friend that's a nurse, or if you have a good friend that works in some kind of industry, it's like, you can always think of targeting that specific industry. So I know as well, I had a lot of bartender friends in mm -hmm. Houston who like owned and like waitressed at bars, bartenders owned a bar, had different kind of shift work hours. Mm -hmm. And so that was another niche area that I went into that I sort of was like, hey, look, I have these times available for you. I'm able to serve. Subgroups in a way, yes. basically just mm -hmm. uh, you know, Facebook groups. If you're uh -huh. on a Facebook group, maybe there's one person there. Yes. And uh, mm -hmm. if you if you enjoy going to trivia night, every yep. trivia night, meet someone there, right? Yep. So it's so it's networking. Yes. You're in, in, in your best case scenario, the best way to look at everything is that you're a master networker. Yeah. Right? I mean, basically. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah. Never thought of that. Okay. Well, I mean, so when it comes down, let's talk about, uh, we're not going to leave here without talking about the hate. Uh -huh. because I think hate is important. I think failure is uh -huh. even more important. Uh -huh. um, I, I believe that you have to be, the only way you're successful is if you failed. Uh -huh. So let's talk about a time that you did fail with either a client or failed with uh, learn, uh, teaching someone the right method I mean, can you talk about a failure you had? Yeah, I so when I was first uh, starting training, I got the Instagram and I was starting to get a lot of traction on my Instagram. A brand reached out to me about developing an app for me. And I had an app that was my own app for a while. Mm -hmm. And it was okay in the sense that it functioned okay, but honestly it went, I did not do my due diligence as a business owner in terms of assessing what I would be able to do with that app in terms of like, would this brand that I partnered with allow me to do what I want to do or would this in some way affect my image and make it look in a way that I didn't want it to look. And so I got to that point where I, I did not assess enough at the beginning stages to know where it would progress to and understand that I wasn't going to be able to do much within that. And That's so amazing. I didn't know that story. Yeah, I had an app and it was it was I had great relationships with a lot of the women that use the app, but eventually it got to the point that it was something that I was honestly not proud of. And so I was not going to be a part of something like that. It I didn't like what it was sort of representing about me. The company and I were in completely different pages. And that's wow. that's on me for not. You know. But you're able to make an adjustment and you're able yep. to make the change. And I think that is probably the most important thing. You learn something in that. In that. Yeah. So uh, now let's talk last. Uh, we're not going to leave in a hate note, but we're definitely <laughs> going to. I want to talk about what do you tell? I know you may not have as many trolls as there are. In the, I mean, it's the Internet, right? And mm -hmm. the Internet is is unruly. Someone's going to say they don't like me in a purple shirt. Yeah, it's it's whatever. Yeah. Now, how do you stay strong? How do you uh, persevere through because the littlest things hurt. The yeah. littlest things hurt. Oh, yeah. And it could be anything from, you just know, and yeah. little things hurt. So how do you go beyond it? I think, honestly, the more you are investing in yourself in your daily life, the less likely that those things are going to have a toll on you. And like, yes, sure, reading a comment that's terrible or, or seeing something like that might initially get you that spark of like, oh, where you mm -hmm. just feel gross or you feel down about yourself. Mm -hmm. But being able to remember all the things that you've you put into yourself, I think, is it goes a long way. And then also engaging in it, maybe in a more educational format. That's always my kind of fun way to do it is if somebody is saying something silly that's just like, OK, I know you're trying to get a rise out of me i'll sort of ask a question or like just just go off on a tangent of like a long response that they <laughs> that's so smart like. though i mean you kill them with education <laughs> and i love that actually yeah. now 
now let's talk about uh, your next endeavors if you have any new endeavors let's yes. talk about uh you know where do you see yourself in the next year what do you want to do in the next year is it going to be bc the mm -hmm. entire time which there's no that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, how do you see BC growing or where would you yeah. like to go? So we are currently looking at our second location actually in the nation. Hey, yeah. Because, All right. yeah, the nations is like where it's at. It's a fantastic neighborhood. We would love a more neighborhood vibe. We would keep this location, but in the instance, if, if that, where is this first location? So the people know it's in the Gulch right by, um, on division street by the Greyhound. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So the nations nations is where we would like to go. And that is where we would actually be able to build out a facility facility that is our dream in terms of like what it would look like. This facility we took over from an existing uh, gym. And so we, we weren't able to sort of blueprint what we wanted it to look at. Whereas this next location, we would be able to build it in the way that we wanted and actually be able to serve more people in terms of having large group classes, small mm -hmm. group classes, one-on-one -on -one training, which would be amazing. So taking the brand, yes. the brand is just getting bigger. BC yes. is just going to get bigger. Yes. Correct. Okay. So then yeah. from there, so you guys are in the, uh, the looking stages right now. Yes. We okay. are. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there any game plan on when this may actually happen? Honestly, it's we've put in a couple offers on some um, land and some spots that are there. And so we're going to see basically if it goes. If it goes from there, then it's basically, you know, how things get built in Nashville. Let's hope it goes. Hey, quickly. well, I think that's still awesome. <laughs> yeah. Now, I want to talk about uh, now also outside of BC, you mm -hmm. personally, where where do you want to go? I so I also want to include aspects of community outreach within BC. So that's my main goal personally is I would like to bring in more opportunities for youth like um especially in low income or poor performing schools i would like to get those kids in to shadow trainers to see what it's like to be in the fitness industry and to get them into the health and fitness industry because i think if you could get younger kids that maybe don't have a lot of prospects or don't are not seeing a lot of prospects for themselves and grew up in the sort of neighborhoods that i was teaching at in houston it's like if we could get them into fitness and get them passionate about that i think they would excel i think that's something that a lot of kids that maybe don't have other avenues could really get into could I love learn. that and it would be it would be so awesome giving back to that. the youth man we need we need more of that okay so speaking of the youth and speaking mm -hmm. about uh, you know your daily life and your daily function and, and changing mm -hmm. things so we do something here at the gulch where uh, in the heart of the gulch i should say uh one thing we do on this youtube show is we show what you do in your daily life yeah. and we call it walk the line awesome. and uh you're able to just show whatever you would like to show to our audience and i mm -hmm. think that's what makes us a little different yeah now the way that we always start it is uh, you look into this camera right here who's looking straight at you <laughs> and you basically say, hi, I'm Carmen Morgan uh -huh. and this is how I walk the line. And then we're going to transition into the behind the scenes of you. So you're able to do that for me. Awesome. All right. Well, in, in between. So let's uh, let's get that done real quick right here. So hi, I'm Carmen Morgan and this is how I walk the line. Oh, 
All right, y'all. And if you ever want to come visit, please hit me up in the DMs. I coach mainly Wednesdays and Saturdays, but I'm here most days anyways, and we have excellent coaches. We got three morning classes, a noon class, and three evening classes. You can check out all of that on our website, or just email team at bootcampgym.com, and we'll get you set up. I'm Carmen, and this is how I walk the line.